Hey everybody, it's Libby and I want to welcome you back to another episode um, hosted by Woot Recruit. Again, I'm Libby with Woot Recruit and what is Woot Recruit? Well, we are the only recruiting program designed specifically for the high turnover industry, such as industries like cleaning, lawn care, construction, or any, ser any other service-based industry we are the recruiters for you. We're not just a recruitment software or just another tool. We are the first of its kind, a done for you process dedicated to transforming your recruiting into a growth engine for your service business. Stick around and we're gonna dive into some strategies, tips, stories that will revolutionize your hiring process. So today I want to talk about, so I just returned from an amazing event and I was, I did a stage presentation and it was on the bench and I thought this was a, would be a great topic for our blog page because so many people look at recruiting through the eyes of a traditional lens. And my stage presentation was called expect more from the bench. And I just want to share with our, our viewers, our listeners, what this is and how this can save your business. So we're going to dive into it. Um, if, if, you're the, if this is the first time you're watching, a little intro about me. Um, I own a service-based business. I own Woot Recruit. I also own Service Cart with a partner. I am a CBF coach for Debbie Sardone. And so I'm very, very engrossed in the service industry, but I'm also... Um, a software founder for the service industry. I'm a wife, I have kids, I run multiple businesses, all while trying to take care of myself. And I share that journey on my personal Facebook page. So feel free to check me out. I'm the only Libby DeLucian in the world. So when I'm speaking, I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking on behalf of the people I've coached, the struggles I've seen, the struggles I've experienced. And so I'm not speaking or teaching or creating softwares that are based on theory. These are real needs or gaps in our industry. So I want to talk about one of the biggest needs or gaps in our industry, which is the bench, building that bench. And what does that mean? So the first thing I want you to do is think about the bench from a sports perspective. When we look at sports teams, we, we know that like a basketball team, a professional NBA team has about 18 people on the roster, um, but only five people play on the court at any given time. And then an NFL team has like some crazy amount, like 52 players on the roster, but only 11 players are on the, t on the field at any given time. And so I want you to think of the bench as a way to have a pool of qualified candidates before the position even opens up. Like, what does that mean? So, because I'm every mentor, every book we read um, always says, always be recruiting, always be recruiting. And the first pushback we get when we say this, when I coach on this is, well, I can't afford it, or I don't need anybody right now, or I'm fully staffed. And so we're going to dive into what the concept of the bench means as a proactive, as being proactive and strategic when it comes to your recruiting. What does it mean? And, you know, we're going to dive into it. But first, I want to talk about like the fear that we have when it comes to always be recruiting. Like, oh, my gosh, I can't afford it. Or what are my current employees going to say if their schedules are not full? Um. You know, we have the fear of a lot of people are, well, I don't want to interview anybody because I don't want to waste their time if, if, I'm, if I'm fully staffed. So there's a lot of fears around it, but I want to break those fears and I want you to help, I want to help you see it in a different way. So when it comes to fears around this, you know, bench mentality, the always be recruiting, the first thing I want you guys to think, or the first thing I want you to think about it um, in a way of it being insurance, right? We don't need our liability insurance or our workman's comp insurance until something goes wrong, until somebody falls, but we keep it and we pay for it every month because we need it. So I want you to think about always be recruiting or building a bench 
in terms of insurance. It's the insurance for your business. Because when we have people quit, and if you get over a certain threshold of employees, they no longer just quit one at a time. It's the way the universe is, works. They're quitting three and four at a time. And so it's completely paralyzing to our business. And so there's always this fear of, I don't have enough or, oh my gosh, three people quit now. What am I going to do? Um, so think of the bench or the always be recruiting mindset as it's the same reason why we cut carry insurance, same reason why we pay for insurance when I've paid for insurance for years and thank goodness never had to use it, but I'm not going to stop paying for insurance. And so the one thing I want you to think about when it comes to the fear, and it's not meant to scare you, but it's meant to be the truth is that currently 52% of our current workforce is considering leaving your company. 52%. So that means half of our staff is thinking about looking for a new job, is thinking about changing a job, is thinking about switching careers. 52%. And so this is another reason why we have to get over the fear is because that's when all of a sudden three or four people quit and we don't understand why they were already thinking about it. It was already in their heads. And then the other thing we have to do is break the myth of the traditional way of recruiting. And the myth is, oh, I only need to recruit when I need someone. But if you're recruiting when you need someone, it's too late. You're already losing money. You're already turning away work. You're already in the negative for efficiency. And so I want you to not think about it in this way. And the other part of the myth is when people are like, oh, I don't need to recruit until I need somebody. The first thing I want to ask you is, so you're telling me every single person on your company is an A player. You're telling me that no one has called out. You're telling me that no one has quality issues and that every single person is a good fit, a culture fit. And that is another reason why we need to always be recruiting because no business owner can tell me yes to all those questions. So we need to continue to recruit so we can get better culture fits. So we can let people that are not good fits free so that they can find the, the, the dream of the, the job of their dreams or a better fit for their lives or their culture, because it's, it's, it's gotta be a mutual understanding. And sometimes employees stay because it's easy. Sometimes businesses keep employees because it's easy. But in reality, if we're always recruiting, we're helping the employee and we're helping the business. We have to think about it. We have to break that traditional myth of recruiting and we have to stop settling as this goes for employees too. They need to stop settling for a job that doesn't fit them. And we as business owners need to stop settling for employees that don't fit our culture. It goes both ways. And then we all want the same thing. As business owners, we want great companies with great culture and good profit or great profit. But when we're always playing catch up and we're always recruiting from a place of desperation or we're recruiting bad fits because we're desperate, that's what hurts our profit because all of this bad hiring and bad decision making eats up the profit. And I'm going to get into some numbers. We're going to cover how this can actually help me and my bottom line when it comes to profit. So one of my promises in explaining this to you is to really understand the why of always be recruiting, the why of building your bench. And I'm going to dive into the importance of the bench, which we've already covered a few. How do you implement the bench? What are the ways I can always be recruiting? And then the financial impact of the bench. And so many people, I hear this all the time. I have friendly competitors who own recruiting softwares or recruiting agencies. We own one too. And then one of the things is they're like, oh, we were going to cancel because we want to bring it in house or we want to save money or we can't afford it. So I'm going to get into the financial impact of how always be recruiting and building your bench can save you money. And we want to make sure that we're, we really dive into these aspects. And so the first one is going to be the importance of always be recruiting. What is the importance? Well, the importance is it gives you a competitive edge. It reduces the time to hire. It lowers your cost per hire. 
it improves quality of hire, it, en it enhances your employer brand, and it increases flexibility and scalability. I don't know how many people watching here want to grow, but I know I want to grow. So like when I see the words increase scalability, um, I'm like, I'm sold. But it's super important just to know those things right there. Those two, three, four, five, six things, right? It reduces time to hire. Amazing, right? Then we're not inefficient anymore. Competitive edge. Our competitors are not always recruiting, so I can swoop those candidates off the market faster than my competitor can. Improved quality, right? We're no longer settling. We have options. Enhance your employer brand. To continuously recruit can improve a company's employer brand by ensuring a consistent and positive candidate experience. If we're always recruiting, we know what the heck we're doing. We're good at it. We've practiced a hundred times. We have a process, we have a system, and we can give an amazing experience to the applicant and the new hire because again, we know what we're doing. We've created and implemented a process. And then, you know, increase flexibility. Well, because we've created that process, we can now grow at scale. We can document this process. We can onboard properly, efficiently. We have our training dialed in and we can now crank it up and just rinse and repeat, 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 repeat. So those are amazing. Like, like that list of six are just absolutely amazing to really think about and say, well, why am I not always recruiting? Why am I not building that bench? Well, you know, why am I not? Uh, I have some stats. Only 38% of businesses are continuously recruiting. I, only 38%, which is crazy. But 83% of us know that we should be doing it. 83% of us know that it takes up to two months to fill a position properly. That means if I'm going the old way, I'm, I'm following that myth of I don't need to hire anyone until someone quits. It's, you know, it's going to take longer because you have to then post to Indeed, start to look at resumes or applications, start to set up interviews. So it's, two months from time to hire to an efficient employee. And 83% of us know this, but we still, and it lowers productivity, it increases the workload of our current employees, and it reduces customer service quality, and it costs us more money. But 83% of us know all these things, but we, but we still drag our feet, which is crazy. And so how do I implement a always be recruiting or a building a bench into my company? Well, the first thing I have to say, it is a mindset. You have to coach your current staff or yourself to break the mindset of the traditional way. It is the non-traditional way of recruiting, but it's one of the best things. It works better than any other way. So you want to break the mindset. You want to coach your current staff that they have to always be recruiting. A great example is I had an owner come up to me just this week and say, Hey, like we need to talk. Who recruits not working. We don't have anybody interviewing, nobody's scheduling. And I said, well, that's weird. Let's dive into it. So we dove into it. And what we found out was the person responsible for the recruiting had blocked out the, her calendar and were only doing interviews one time a week and only allowing 10 people to schedule an interview. So in reality, it wasn't necessarily a root recruit that wasn't working. It was the office manager or the owner and the person doing the recruiting, they weren't lined up. That, that person doing the recruiting didn't understand the importance of always be recruiting. She was like, oh, we don't really need anybody till mid-April. I can just turn it off. I have other things to do. But then the owner thinks, oh, it's not working or nobody's interviewing. So there's not an alignment. So it's a mindset. It is 100% a mindset. And then the other way you can or incorporate the bench or always be recruiting into your company is to leverage some tools like Woot Recruit, like a, um, an RPO system. So what is an RPO, right? Well, 
I mean, an RPO is a recruiting process that's outsourced. And that is what Woot Recruit is. And that is a huge way to help incorporate this into your business. And we're going to get over some, we're going to actually cover some financials of what a service like Woot Recruit, an RPO, a recruiting process that's outsourced, can help bring your company. So you want to make sure you're leveraging other tools or programs to help with this process if you cannot do it in-house. But it is cheaper to leverage an RPO system like Woot Recruit. Um, and we're going to get into that. So what are the financial aspects of always be recruiting or building your bench? So some of your financial aspects are actually huge, right? So the cost savings, the cost savings of always be recruiting, building a bench will, will reduce your recruiting costs by 50% versus the traditional ways of recruiting versus bringing it in house. People are like, oh, I want to bring it in house. I hired a VA or a remote person to help me do the recruiting. They're not an expert. They're going to make mistakes, right? They're not trained. They don't understand indeed. They don't have the mindset yet. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of letting people practice on things that cost me money, right? So like salespeople, if they're practicing on real leads, that's costing us real money. If you're hiring people to take over your recruiting and they still have to practice and learn, I'm not in the business of letting people practice using real money, real applicants and real leads. So by using an RPO, a system like Woo Recruit, you can reduce your recruiting cost by 50%, which is crazy because we are experts. We're like Google AdWords experts, but for Indeed. We already know they're trained. We're saving offices up to eight to 12 hours a week in off in admin time, just admin time, by using a system like Woot Recruit, an RPO. So this is a substantial savings. People are looking at it like a cost, but when you're the owner, if you're spending eight to 10 hours doing this at an owner's pay, it's expensive. It's significantly less. Or if you have a $20 an hour office admin who's doing this, again, you're going to save money by outsourcing this process. And then not to mention the cost of a bad hire. So if we're not always recruiting, we don't have that process instilled in our business, we haven't either outsourced it or created it inside our business, it's still cheaper to outsource it. A bad hire can cost a company up to $15,000 per bad hire. What do you mean, Libby? Well, when we're not always recruiting, we're hiring out of desperation. We're settling for the least worst candidate. We're hiring bad fits for culture. And so up to $15,000 is the risk of a bad hire, which is crazy, but it's what happens when we rush to fill a position. It's, it ha it's what happens when we make bad decisions because we're turning away work, dollars. And so this does not include bad hires when it can really dampen morale, what it does to your, your culture and your business or uh, mistakes at a job like ruining someone's hardwood floors. Um, it doesn't cost, it doesn't take into a cost the inefficiency or downtime. So it's astronomical, the cost of a bad hire. The financial impact to a business is substantial and we can't afford it as a small business, but we can afford to always be recruiting so that we don't put ourselves in this bind. Again, look at it like your insurance policy. So many people have come up to me and thanked me because they're like, Oh my God, we just had three people quit. But you know what? I was able to bounce back because Woot Recruit had a, I just interviewed tons of great candidates that week. Tons of great candidates that week. So we bounce back like that. And the other thing that I want to ask you about this is why are we keeping employees that aren't great candidates? If we can set them free to find the calling, their calling we can then replace them with candidates. Because I, I always ask businesses, you're telling me that if a rock star walked through your door, you wouldn't offer them a job. Even if you have a, all your employees are full, you, you have to offer them that job. That's how we grow, that's how we scale. So in businesses, there's two types of stress, right? There's the stress of under hired and turning away work. And there's the stress of being over hired. 
having to find work. I don't know about you, but I would love, I would prefer, I prefer the stress of being overhired and it forcing me as a business owner outside of my comfort box to figure out how to get more work, how to up our marketing, how to be innovative and get that schedule full versus down in the dumps because I'm turning away work and I don't know what to do. So again, just to recap on this is building your bench is a mindset. We have to coach our current office team. We have to coach ourselves to always be recruiting, to build the bench of your dreams because we need to expect more out of our recruiting process. There was the importance of the bench we covered, how to implement the bench and the financial impact of the bench. But the one thing I can leave you guys with is that change is the only constant, right? We always be recruiting. It's not just a tactic, guys. It is a mindset that we must have. We need to expect more from the bench, from the strength of your team today dictates the success of our companies tomorrow. So again, this is Libby with Woot Recruit. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you enjoyed the episode, please remember to subscribe. It was my pleasure on guiding you through the process of effective recruiting, how to build that bench. And for more insights or strategies like this one, remember to subscribe and follow us. Until next time, keep pushing those boundaries of what you think is possible with your hiring process. Let's make recruiting a superpower in your business. Until the next episode, guys.